Hello everyone, it's Pal Pondron Weather. In this video, we're gonna be talking about a dangerous storm system that's gonna bring large hail, extreme winds, and tornadoes. So if you're new to the channel, click the subscribe button and the notification bell to get all my daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's get right to it. Here's the latest uh, satellite picture as of this morning, uh, April the 9th. And we've got a very active day in store, guys. So this is the latest satellite. There's some storms uh, brewing right now in southern portions of uh, Alabama into Georgia into uh, the Florida Panhandle with a lot of lightning. And you can see up here uh, into uh, Oklahoma and across the Red River getting into portions of uh, North Texas and Northeast Texas. We have some elevated storms that actually formed above the boundary layer or what they call the cap. And that is producing um, some some rain and some stronger storms, not severe, uh, but earlier, you know, this morning, uh, just northeast of the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex. So let me kind of walk you through the latest uh, storm prediction center because they actually have increased this threat, and it is a dangerous threat, guys. So we're going to go over all the particulars. They have essentially a moderate risk and kind of the bullseye here if you live in jackson mississippi uh, monroe louisiana getting into hattiesburg uh, uh, mississippi as well as greenville mississippi this whole area is going to be under the gun for all three modes of severe weather and we'll go over all those in detail and then it uh, you have an enhanced risk from birmingham alabama to uh, little rock arkansas into mobile alabama and then you have a slight risk into the dallas fort worth area uh, memphis tennessee into atlanta georgia tulsa oklahoma getting into arlington let me kind of walk you through uh, the particulars of each risk here is your hell risk getting in it's going to be starting into the Dallas Worth area essentially there's a dry line we've got a lot of heating down south I mean we're talking hundreds uh, in south Texas today that dry that surge of uh, heat will lift northward as that dry line approaches later on uh, this afternoon and there's a strong cap there's been a strong cap over the Metroplex and that's supposed to maybe possibly weaken. So there's going to be about a three to eight, uh, between three to eight uh, over the Metroplex in the DFW Metroplex, where it's kind of like that uncertain zone. If uh, if the dry line is able to get some clearing out west, the you know storms may uh, break and perform you know over supercells. If it remain cloudy the rest of the day and the sun doesn't break out, then the cap stays in place and nothing happens too much over the metroplex. But then things look to start gearing up just east of the metroplex, say east of uh, say Highway uh, 75, you know Interstate 45, especially as you get northeast, and that's where that zone kind of is where they kind of depicted where they got a slight risk for hail getting into Dallas uh, eastward. And especially you'll get some larger hailstones, especially in East Texas, uh, getting into uh, Shreveport, Louisiana, getting into Jackson, Mississippi, uh, Tyler, uh, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, Fort Smith, Arkansas. They had that one cell you can with the cat breaking over Stephenville yesterday that traveled about 150 miles southeast and broke all that hail and eventually ended up in College Station. So that traveled, you know, 150, 200 miles with uh, anywhere from golf ball to baseball size hail to hen size hail. So that was a larger event that happened. So you can tell what happens in this atmosphere, you know, if if the cat breaks. But yeah, it's more susceptible uh, for it to break and have those larger hailstones uh, today. You know, essentially, if you live east of the Dallas Worth Metroplex, especially northeast and in East Texas and getting into, uh, like I mentioned, Shreveport, getting into Jackson, Mississippi, Tyler, Texas, uh, those areas. But then that hell risk extends all the way into Memphis, Tennessee, uh, into Atlanta, Georgia, getting into uh you know, portions of, uh, you know, Birmingham, Alabama uh, later on today. So there's a big zone that's going to be under a hell threat, not just a small hell threat. I mean, these are these are larger hailstones. I mean, anywhere from, you know, quarter size. But if you're under that 30 percent risk, you could be looking at, you know, possibly golf ball, tennis ball, even sometimes up to baseball size hail. So that is some very damaging hail. 
That could happen later on today. And even, you know, not out of the question, Houston's not out of the clear. Austin's not out of the clear. Waco's not out of the clear because you still have a 5% chance of some reaching some of those, just the probability uh, goes down as, you know, the further south uh, you live. So don't, you know, don't leave your, you know, it's one of those days you got to be weather well for, for all three modes of severe weather. So if it's not the hail, it's the extreme winds because we're going to have a squall line that's going to be moving through. And some of these winds could be picking up 70. 80 miles an hour is no question. I mean, that's going to be just to do just as much damage uh, with straight line winds, downburst winds, microburst winds that as a, a small, you know, EF0, EF1 tornado uh, would. So this is a very damaging wind threat into Jackson, Mississippi, uh, Monroe, Louisiana, getting into Hattiesburg, getting into Meridian, getting into Greenville. So if you live in those zones, you're going to be under the gun for those higher, the highest probability of those extreme winds with this nasty squall line that's going to be moving through uh, later on. And especially, it's probably going to be an overnight event as you get into these uh, these areas. But yeah, anywhere from Birmingham to, to Little Rock to Shreveport, you're also going to experience those winds and those nasty squall line. So, you know, even places down south into Lupkin, getting into Houston again. Yeah, like I mentioned, the probabilities just go down. Just, you know, you can still see those extreme winds. It's just more likely that you'll be higher gust as you get into the uh, the purple zones. And here's your tornado threat. So not only is you're going to be dealing with the hail, the extreme winds, but you're also going to have rotation in the atmosphere uh, where that split is. And the most prob- highest probability of possibly seeing a tornado today is getting into Shreveport, Louisiana, uh, Jackson, Mississippi, getting into Monroe and Hattiesburg area, Bo- Bossier City. So that those zones has the highest probability. And even into Birmingham and into, into uh, Little Rock is, is still out of the question to get a, a possible uh, tornado today. And even into Dallas, you're still not out of the clear. I mean, it's just the 2% chance, but you, you can still have a tornado spin up along on that squall line. If it's not from the when the cap b- might break, that's that if question over the Metroplex, but you're still going to have a cold front that's going to be moving through the Metroplex as well. Could have some nasty weather with it as well later on this evening. So we'll go over all those uh, parameters. So here's the latest uh, uh, radar depiction from the, the NAM 3K. We've got the, so the storm activity uh, right now into uh, northeast Texas. We've got the little little system down here down south into New Orleans, uh, getting into the Florida Panhandle. And we have some rain happening uh, later on this afternoon morning into uh, uh, Minnesota here. But as we kind of walk you through, uh, here's uh, as we get later on later on in the afternoon. There's you see this particular model shows there's nothing actually forming out west, basically keeping the cap in place over the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex. A little bit more likely over the northeastern uh, northeastern Texas, where the cap may potentially start to break. But then we also have that branding feature out here in uh, Arkansas, getting into Louisiana with those uh, uh, stronger winds. But as we go through uh, the evening, here's at 10 o'clock tonight. This kind of depicts on where that cold front uh, could be at this that time frame could set the stage for those those higher winds, some of those hailstones that's coming out along that leading edge of that of that uh, where that cold front lies, and that's going to set the stage for that nasty weather to extend into uh, Arkansas, get into Missouri, uh, get into portions of Mississippi, get into western Tennessee by then. This is 10 o'clock uh, this evening, and as we continue through, here's your tornado parameter. So, you know, you're going to have that higher uh, tornado threat the further east uh, you live. So here's kind of your tornado, tornado parameters at uh, midnight uh, uh, tonight as you get into uh, portions of East Texas, especially into Louisiana, uh, as you get into uh, uh, Mississippi. And then here's your, your your radar by the time what midnight would look like, where that nasty squall line would be, you're going to start feeling some of those higher wind gusts, uh, possibly up to 70 miles an hour, up to 80 miles an hour. So this is an overnight event, unfortunately, for you guys. So you have to keep your weather radio uh, handy to listen to all your warnings and take necessary precautions because this is a na- going to be a nasty squall line with all three modes of severe weather uh, with it as it hits your area. And it's a quick mover. I mean, we're talking 40, 50 mile per hour uh, movement with these particular storms as this continues shifting off into Louisiana, into Mississippi, western Tennessee, western Tennessee here, 
Missouri, uh, Illinois, uh, as we continue through the overnight, that nasty squall line by the time you wake up on the Saturday morning will be over, uh, you know, eastern portions of, uh, you know, Mississippi getting into uh, Alabama now as you've been dealing with those those straight line winds just all night long and that's that nasty squall line will continue shifting off into the east and back behind you you've got that curly cue again setting up you know over iowa getting into missouri with that that backlash of the the storm system on the north side but then your your severe threat for uh saturday dies down a little bit so so we're under a slight risk for severe weather as those storms continue uh pushing off into the east they'll be in new orleans by then getting into Atlanta, Georgia, getting into Birmingham, uh, Montgomery, going into Mobile. That's where you have that slight risk for uh, severe weather. And then that uh, a little bit lighter risk, a marginal risk, getting into Columbus, uh, Nashville, Tennessee, uh, Toledo, Ohio area, Cincinnati, Ohio, as this expands uh, northward and keeps shifting uh, off uh, to the east. And this is that band where it would be around noontime on Saturday. You can see it kind of fishtails here down to the south. You got some stronger storms into the Florida panhandle. Uh, that just extends with that linear band into eastern Tennessee, getting into central Kentucky by then, getting into Illinois, and then kind of wrapping around, uh, you know, uh, uh, Indiana, or Illinois, getting into Missouri on the wrap, wrap around on the backside. As this continues uh, moving across, we'll expand the view and shift it off into the east. You can kind of see that banding. The further further it moves to the east, it kind of loses loses its punch a little bit as it continues shifting off, and it kind of just fishtails down here at the bottom. So by the time we get into uh, later on the day on Saturday, getting into about six o'clock now on Saturday, this would be into the Florida Panhandle, extending off into Virginia portions, getting into West Virginia, Ohio, as this you know this wrap around moisture uh, continues moving off into the east. And again, you can definitely kind of see it just loses its luster even more by the time it gets up to the Mid-Atlantic states, uh, Pennsylvania, getting into New York and into Jersey. Uh, then it kind of fishtails down at the bottom and you might pick up some a secondary surge of energy with that Gulf moisture into the Florida panhandle. And especially as we get into later on in the day on Sunday, you can start seeing those stronger storms start to pop up into uh, the northern uh Florida of the panhandle, get it into portions of the central uh, panhandle of Florida, and this kind of winds itself down as it just really kind of elongates as the system finally uh, moves off the, uh, the east coast by the time we get later on the day on Saturday into uh, Monday. But here's your rain. I mean, so we're going to be dealing with a lot of activity for the next uh, 24 hours with our major severe threat. So definitely be a, be weather aware for the next 24 hours. And then as uh, this, this is your precipitation between now and say Sunday, that would be lined up essentially from Dallas all the way through uh, the southeast, getting into the central U.S. with those red banding features. You're talking two uh, to four inches of rain. It could have some flooding rains at time into New Orleans, getting into Florida Panhandle with those uh, heavier rains. So definitely uh, stay weather well today. It's a very active day in the weather front. So I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Uh, do like this video. Definitely leave your comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest updates update where I protect you before and after the storm.